This portfolio that mimics stock trading by Congress has risen 47% this year. Using Quiver Quantitative, you can see what congressperson is trading what in real time. You can literally scroll through and see what they're buying and selling and the range of how much money. You can also see who is trading the most, which is just interesting. Josh and Nancy, I'm looking at you. When the people who are making the decisions affect what companies can do what, are also the ones cashing in on the success or failures of these companies, that's definitely not fair. But at least we can see what's going on and start to make a strategy very similar. Now this video is not just going to be on this website, but I found it and I thought that you might benefit from at least taking a look around. Be warned because there's so much information on this thing that you're probably not gonna resurface for a couple of days. You can check out things like Congress trading, government contracts that you should know about, meme stock ratings, Wall Street bets updates, trackers like the Jim Cramer tracker and the Greed and Fear Index. For me, I love to see where the Greed and Fear Index is at, even though we can kind of guess based on what people and the news are saying and if it's positive or negative. Lately, it's been a lot more negative with a lot of people talking about the coming recession, or at least thinking that a recession is coming. Obviously, we wanna do what Warren Buffett famously said, and be greedy when people are fearful, and fearful when people are greedy. This just means that if most people are scared to buy in because the market's dropping, or for fear of a further drop, this is probably the most optimal time to get in. Unfortunately, human psychology works against this, and we wanna be part of the in crowd, so when we see a stock going up, we wanna jump in and not miss out or have FOMO. And when a lot of people are doing that, that means that the greed is going up and ultimately it ends in you making very expensive purchases. Anyway, the premise of this video is to talk about the best and most wealthy investors and have a conversation around just investing in what they invest in. Because most, if not all of them, got to that crazy wealth status by investing in what they invest in, so why not just copy exactly what their portfolio is? When we think of famous investors, we think of Warren Buffett, Ray Dalio, possibly Bill Gates, Kathy Wood, and Citadel's Ken Griffin, who ran the world's best hedge fund last year in 2022, where many people lost a bunch of money. That fund made $16 billion last year. So I'm gonna run you through the top picks in each of their portfolios, and then I'm gonna tell you exactly how to invest exactly like them so that each of us can get a piece of the pie. I'm Nolan Govea, my students call me Professor G, and I made this channel to make investing simplified. If you haven't already, check out my Patreon group in the link down in my description. It's only $20 per month, and you get to be in a mastermind group of other investors navigating the journey where we have live zooms and you get access to DM me anytime you want. All right, so starting off, we have to start with my favorite and that's gonna be Warren Buffett. So let's look at his portfolio. And now all of these investors have very public portfolios that you can check out with a simple Google search. And so I'm not gonna go through the entire portfolio, but I'm gonna go over their top five holdings and any holding that has a substantial weight within the portfolio so that we can figure out what it is that they're trying to invest in through their investing strategy. If they're investing any substantial amount of money into any one of these investments, we definitely need to pay attention. For Warren Buffett's portfolio, number one on the list is Apple with the overwhelming majority, over 46%, which is insane for any investor. Next is Bank of America at 9.09%, American Express at 7.69%, then Coca-Cola at 7.6%, 3% and Chevron at 6.65%. When looking at the rest of his portfolio, he's very big on solid financial institutions, healthcare, energy, and more recently, technology. Warren Buffett does a massive, massive amount of research before investing in any one company. And when he likes something, he goes big. And when he believes in something, something like Apple, he's not afraid to bet most of the money on a company like that, rather than just spread out that money just for diversification. Sake. The next portfolio to look at and research is that of Ray Dalio. Ray Dalio is an American billionaire investor and hedge fund manager who served as co-chief investment officer of the world's largest hedge fund, Bridgewater Associates, since 1985 and recently last year retired from that position, but not from investing. He's famous for his all-weather portfolio, which is one that's supposed to stand up to the test of time and be good and bring returns even in a down market. It has a lot more bonds and fixed income than most 
most with only 30% in stocks and then another 15% in commodities. But anyway, for his portfolio, he's very, very heavy on consumer staples and on healthcare, which are both pretty safe. He's also been very outspoken about investing in emerging markets outside of the United States. No surprise, his top position is an emerging markets ETF at 5.3% of the portfolio. Next is the good old S&P 500 at 4.8%, then Procter & Gamble at 4.3%, and Johnson & Johnson at 3.4%. He's also got Pepsi, Coca-Cola, Costco, McDonald's, and Walmart at the top. Obviously investing in very safe and very strong companies with products that people are gonna buy no matter how the economy is doing is a very strong and very safe investment strategy. Next on the list is Bill Gates. And this one is a very interesting portfolio. And it's one that when I actually took a deep dive and looked at it, I was wondering why there weren't certain companies in there that maybe were more profitable than what he had chosen. So it's always important for you to make sure and do your research and ask why, and then try to follow up that why with an answer. But anyway, Bill Gates doesn't need an introduction, but he's the founder of Microsoft. More so nowadays, he's into philanthropy, and his investing portfolio is actually set up as a trust for his foundation, for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. As such, they do not invest in the most profitable or biggest companies, but instead choose companies that meet their standards ethically and other factors. There's only 22 stocks in the portfolio, and the top three make over 60% of the entire portfolio. Number one in his portfolio, no surprise here, is Microsoft at 31.05%. The next one, though, was definitely a surprise for me, and this is the Canadian National Railway at 17.74%. Number three was waste management at 15.77%. And then the rest of them really drop off, but to round out the top five would be Caterpillar and Deer. Very similar to Dalio's portfolio, there's a lot of safety here and stable companies that at least won't lose 50% overnight. But this next portfolio is totally different than the first couple ones. This one's a very exciting portfolio. This investor's all about boom or bust investments and the portfolio is definitely made up of such. This this investor is Kathy Wood and she's the CEO of ARK Invest. A lot of the picks in this portfolio are a lot of the fun companies that I get a lot of questions from you about, so listen up. Her portfolio is very heavy in technology and also in healthcare. Number one is Tesla at 8.3%. Number two is Coinbase at 7.8%. Three is Roku at 4.5%. Four is UiPath at 5.2%, and then number five is Block at 4.9%. All of these companies are cutting edge companies that are trying to disrupt not only their industry, but multiple industries at once, especially the crypto-based ones. Something to notice here though, is that while one of the picks, Tesla, is crushing it and is up over 225%, all the rests are very, very down, which is why Kathy is taking a lot of heat right now. That's what happens in an exciting portfolio though. If you pick a winner, you're gonna win big, but if you lose, it hurts. The next investor that we're gonna look at is worth about $21 billion. So he probably knows a thing or two about investing. Ken Griffin founded the hedge fund Citadel and serves as its chairman today, and it was the best performing hedge fund last year. The top three sectors in his portfolio are technology, finance, and healthcare. Looks like we're seeing a theme here. The top positions of this portfolio are a little bit different than all the rest, because the top number one position in this portfolio only takes up 1.4%, meaning that there's a lot of positions in this portfolio and no one stock takes up any dominating amount. That first position is Nvidia at 1.4%, then we got Meta at 1.3%, third is Adobe at 1%, number four is the ETF QQQ, right under 1%, and then fifth is JP Morgan, again, right under 1%. Pretty cool to see a couple of these investors choosing ETFs that we talk about a lot on this channel. So now we have a lot of information as to what these people are choosing and how they're investing and even how our Congress people are investing. What should we do with this information? First, you should look at the entire portfolio and look at the types of companies that these people are choosing to invest in. Look at the diversification they've either chosen or not chosen 
and start to ask, why do you think that is? It's not necessarily about what their portfolio looks like that should concern you, as far as what you might want to invest in specifically though. If you like the way a certain investor thinks or makes decisions, you wanna just see what he or she is doing today or this year, more so than just what their entire portfolio consists of. So look at what they've been doing recently. For example, many people say they invest in Coca-Cola because they say if it's good enough for Buffett, then it should be good enough for me. The problem is that I'm not so sure that Warren Buffett would pick that company today, at least in the scale that he has in his portfolio right now, if he was starting out today. I know that because he bought all his shares between 1988 and 1994. He isn't consistently adding that to the portfolio. He bought when it was at crazy value. He did also buy more shares in 2012 when there was a huge dip, but that was his last transaction. Coca-Cola. People looking to gain from Coca-Cola what Buffett did are in for a bit of a rude awakening. Just to be clear, I do think that Coca-Cola is a good company and that it's a good stock and has a nice, solid, consistent dividend, but I don't think it's going to make you the same kind of rich that it does for Warren Buffett. The other thing to consider, though, is that just because these investors make a heavy purchase of a certain stock or company in a certain quarter, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's best for you. They aren't only picking a solid stock that should just be a winner, they're picking a stock relative to the rest of their portfolio. By doing that, that's going to hedge their risk and to diversify the portfolio overall. If you already have a pretty tech-heavy portfolio with things like Apple and Microsoft and Nvidia and Tesla, then following Kathy Wood's recent purchase of over $21 million in Coinbase stock may not be the best for you as you'll be adding much more risk. If your portfolio had a bunch of safe plays like like Johnson & Johnson, or JP Morgan, or even waste management, then it may make some sense to pick some riskier option to go ahead and throw some growth into your portfolio. At the end of the day, I watch to see what these brilliant investors are doing and what types of moves they're making, but not to see exactly which stock they picked and then for me to go ahead and pick that exact same stock. I watch it and ask, why did they buy that? What was their mindset? By taking it one step deeper, you can start to find patterns and strategies that will make sense to you and even more importantly, will start to make you a lot of money. Now I've done thousands of hours of research getting you started for your investing journey and through that I found the number one top ETF that if I was to invest in just this one forever, this is the one that I would pick. If you wanna know which ETF I chose along with a couple other ones that made the list and why, watch this video now and let's seriously simplify investing and enjoy life.